Happy Halloween, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Shadows of the Damned. And if you're somebody who doesn't celebrate Halloween, happy Halloween anyway. You know I found Paula in a dumpster, right? What? You said you met her at the supermarket. I did. It was the bin out behind the dime a dozen. And you just picked her up out of the rubbish and brought her home? Why no? Sometimes I think I hardly know you. Yep, so we're just redoing this first little bit here. What was that? I don't know, but we've got company, as in lots of. Well, if they pull up a chair, I would be happy to beat them with it. Ooh, I forgot how loud this game is. Oh, nice. Did that crawler just, like, bleed out on its own or something? Alright. Doing well. forgot about this. These are really fun. I enjoy these little stories here. The man who never had his fill. The man who never had his fill. These are great it stories. Was a cold and snowy eve. Certainly no night for a man without a home to be walking these gray and endless streets. Inside the pizza parlor, George Reed spun a lively tune on his harmonica. The local children giggled and pointed excitedly at the harmonica man as their parents glowed with approval. His reward would be all the pizza he could eat, six pies at least, and a warm bed in one of these folks' homes. He knew they were good for it. Okay. George Reed, probably the name that was on that sign earlier that I was having a bit of trouble reading. It was all frayed and tattered and torn up. But when he tucked in for the night, George had not had his fill. As the years and calories stacked up, most men would have got older and fatter. Yet for all he consumed, George only got thinner as he washed from town to town. Tapeworm! Tonight, he plied his trade with some grannies and orderlies in a nursing home. His harmonica filled the room with joy. After devouring three helpings of pork chops and mashed potatoes, he eyed the plate of the old woman next to him. Juice dribbled down his chin. Go ahead, Georgie, she said. You're such a good boy, you shouldn't have to starve. Okay. I don't know, Johnson might be right with that whole tapeworm idea. But George had not had his fill. Early the next morning, he was already on the freeway with his thumb in the air. Where are you headed? Said the man in the truck. Nowhere, said George. Anywhere. I love Johnson's voices too. They're pretty fantastic. It was a new decade, and tonight George played to an all but empty bar in the city. He had lost a lot of weight. Afterwards, the only woman in the joint took the stool next to him and asked him his name. The bartender leaned over the counter. You don't know this guy, Mary. George is famous, being all over the tri-state area. With a wink, he added, man's insatiable. And that night, George proved it as he buried his face in Mary's beaver. Holy woodland creatures! a boy, George! <laughs> Atta boy, George! <laughs> hey, that harmonica, she purred. But even after five trips to heaven and back, he had not had his fill. The morning after was an awkward affair as they stared at each other over coffee. One wanted to feel more, the other just wanted to feel. Oh, man. In his final days, George was all skin and bones. 
I can relate, except for the skin part. His last meal had been a mistake. It was on a sidewalk one night in a small suburban town that he came across the boy. Hungrily and with an agonized grimace, he opened his mouth to beg for help. Out came a cacophony of wheezes and toots, but the boy understood. Wait, you mean Jorge ate his harmonica? Once he was alone, George Reed looked at the candy bar he held in one hand and began to cry. <laughs> They found George's half-eaten body in a market next town over. In one hand, he held a knife. In the other, a fork. Chunks of flesh had been torn from his chest and his arms. Blood framed an eerie smile. The wind that morning blew fierce, and as it whistled through the hole he'd carved out of his own neck, the harmonica man played his last song in this world. There were gawkers, and many knew him, they shared stories of how he'd filled them with hope, filled them with life. They, at least, had had their fill. <clears throat> Especially Mary. The end. Ah, Johnson, you are a fantastic narrator. Yeah, so we're gonna, as we go through some of the levels, you're gonna notice that they're themed, right? We had the cannibals, um, Carnival. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Cannibal's Carnival area and the cannibal boss who we dealt with there. And afterwards, now we get to learn about him. That was George, the man who never had his fill. Became a cannibal by uh, eating himself in the end. I mean, I think he became a cannibal by eating that boy. Killed himself by eating himself in the end. There's a strawberry over there. Oh, what on earth? That cheeky him! He doused our goat! Then let's put out some lights of our own. <laughs> Ooh, nice headshot. Yeah, these guys are some of the most annoying enemies in the game because... They target goats instead of coming after us. Are you not dead yet? Would you kindly bust a cap in those mother fudges before they douse the lights? Out of my way! Stop bouncing around, too. Come on. Seriously. Can I stun you? Yes. You know, we never finished talking about you kidnapping Paula. I didn't kidnap her. You hauled her out of a skip. Isn't that illegal in some states? What did she say? Nothing. Not for weeks. I was afraid to even touch her, you know? Like she didn't belong to me. To anyone. But something changed. There was a phone call. In general, I really love the banter between our uh, our two characters here. What is that? It's a one-eyed Willy. Um, speaking of phones, put that on hold, G. We've got company. Ah, crap. Disoriented. <laughs> Way too easy. By the way, it probably goes without saying, but we cannot kill any creatures at all when uh, when it's dark or when they're in the dark. Oh, 
boy. These demons are tough. Okay, now what's this about a phone call? Me and Paolo were eating when the phone rang. Suddenly, she slams her fork down and says, Don't answer it! Creepy. First thing she ever said to me. But I got up to take the call. Johnson, you should have seen her. She jumped out of her chair, ran to the phone, and ripped it right off the wall. Whoa! Then she came and put her arms around me and started crying. It was the craziest, weirdest, sexiest thing I have ever seen. I have been hers ever since. So we came in through that window down there. There's an option to go up here. No idea where that will lead us. And there's also the house here. Again, I wish the game had a better way of knowing like which was an optional route and which was intended route. We're gonna go inside and hope that we can still go back out afterwards. Yeah. Ah, the goat. I feel like those should be a thing, don't you? Creepy mirrors. Okay, so I guess that was just a little bit of a recharge. There didn't seem to be any other purpose to that. Which is fine, I'm okay with that. Oh, these atmospheres are so creepy. Okay, so there's a ladder up there. What are you smiling about? Teeth kill. Well, demons don't like teeth. The gun laws here are very strict. Haven't you wondered why they don't shoot back? You and I are violating almost every rule in the book. Heck, I'm practically made of teeth. That's a good point. Johnson is pretty much just a skull. <laughs> Which has a lot of teeth. Have I mentioned how creepy these environments are yet? Oh, hello. Yes, I know. I can make my Johnson better. Expect. Um, okay. Really quick. I think having a quicker reload speed on our big gun will be a really good idea. Expecting any phone calls? No, sir. Maybe it's from Paula. Or at least someone with answers. I think we're okay on booze. I think I accidentally drank an absinthe earlier. I don't know if I meant to do that or not. Or I don't know if I that was overkill. Overhealing. You know what I mean. Dios mio. Paula, is that you? When will this fucking torture end? <gasps> From a hottie to hamburger, just like that. Hmm. I kind of don't like the looks of that area down there. Like, not at all. It looks like a lot of darkness. We 
could use these to chase away the darkness, at least in short bursts. <laughs> Just look at them. Fiery sprinkles in a great big chocolatey sky. Johnson, shut up. I kind of agree with Garcia on this one. Okay. Uh, can I not open you? It looks like a no. Ah. Light chat. <sighs> Magnifico. Oh, not a fan of this. I hate you little jerks. Where are you? I get it? I think I got it. Ooh. All right, here we go again. Sorry, just had to check behind, see if we were missing out on anything. Oh, hello. Nice, killed it. Oh, we got that little crawler here, though. Isn't this fun, everybody? I will admit, these sections do get pretty tedious. I wish we could just, like, shoot them to light them up. That would be really nice. At least our, uh, spirit shield thing doesn't go down while we're activating the fireworks. So there's something, at least. Oh, good. One of those doors. Ah, well. At least this puzzle seems easy enough to figure out. That's nice. Which means, I think, something amazing is about to happen here. Yeah. What the shit is that? Let's take a closer look. Oh yeah, he's our friend. Well, hi ho Name's Christopher, 
Now, don't y'all be afraid. I ain't gonna bite. Trust me. You see, I'm what you call a mixture of beast and human. Oh, best of both worlds, my pappy said. Hey, but what are you doing around these parts? Ain't you immortal? Why should I tell you? All I see is demon. Well, shucks. You gotta look underneath the leathery exterior. Deep down, I am a sensitive and understanding listener. Some asswipe named Fleming stole my girl and took her to his castle. I am here to take her back. Meaning you are on a quest to kick the Prince of Evil's ass? Holy shit! <laughs> oh, I want in on some of this action. How can I help, huh? How can I? Well, I hope that you're offering more than just enthusiasm. I tell you what, I get pretty hungry, and I just love her of them white gems. <laughs> you get enough of those and we can trade. With the right incentive, I might even be able to introduce you to some real product. Know what I mean? <laughs> Magnifico. Okay. Then chuck them sparklies right down the hatch. <laughs> Go on, feed me! Ah! Yeah, so he's a little bit freaky, but Christopher is actually fantastic. Hi ho if it ain't my bestest buddies. So he will sell us things. He will sell ammo for any of our guns that are running low. He will sell drinks, just like a vending machine. Same prices too, it looks like. Most importantly, Christopher hasn't had a visit from the GEA. Mm, you read about Jim Bus all the time. Most importantly, we can buy some uh, performance enhancers. I don't remember if the price has changed at all. I'm pretty much just going to save my gems to buy these red ones. That's about all I care about. That's fantastic. Okie dokie. Mm, I like the enemy stun time on our light shot. That's actually pretty good. And I'm going to keep going with the reload speed on the mono cushioner. I know I don't use it a ton right now, but later on when we need the heavier firepower, I will be glad that I have upgraded the reload speed on this thing. And then light shot should keep enemies stunned a little bit longer. That is also really, really nice. Um, I don't think there's anything else in Christopher's garden here. Ah, one-eyed willy. Um, yeah. Actually, no. You know what? Nope. This is a nice, nice safe little area here. With our good friend Christopher. I don't know why he has all these lantern-y things strapped to his back. I really don't know what that's all about. Does help him to stand out, though. I like his little garden area here. Um, yeah, but this is gonna, that's gonna do it for this video. I can barely even speak anymore. So thank you all for joining me. Happy Halloween, and I will see you next time.